these five-sided planes have centers yes and this center is demonstrated in that point there do you follow mm -hmm. you see it there there are as many points in the icosahedron as there are planes in the dodecahedron okay a cube has six faces one two three four five six and each of those planes is a point you can choose the central point and if you join those points inside the cube you get an octahedron and then if you take the faces of the octahedron there will be eight faces and the cube has eight corners so inside the octahedron you get a cube again you follow? it moves from cube to octahedron cube, octahedron cube, octahedron to uh -huh. infinity uh -huh. inwards to a point which it never reaches of course it's like taking half the <coughs> distance you know the frog goes half the distance to the shore and then he takes half the distance again and he'll never reach the shore do you, do you follow? because he's only halfway there so this is a dodecahedron and this figure on the outside you might be able to see consists of cubes can you see that? Mm -hmm. can you see that cube? I rotate it a little bit and there's another cube mm -hmm. the dodecahedron is five cubes wow. inside each other can you see them? yeah I can do that you see if I place it in different ways you can see the cube each of these cubes mm. yeah, as they come around yeah. and if you make it like this with twelve stars it's nice to do it with straw there it is you have a picture of five cubes that's just part of the thing now everything in the proportions of this has to do with what's called the golden mean do you know what the golden mean is? golden mean? no? goodness me, where were you educated? <laughs> the golden mean do you know how to describe it? I don't remember the numbers exactly no, don't worry about the numbers it's that, it's the relationship that everything is really built upon, it's a natural spiral, right? Yeah, well, um, you're, not, you're not giving me what I want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the golden mean is a proportion. And we are built in those proportions, so you jolly well should know about it. Okay? <laughs> I'm just telling you off a little bit. <laughs> it's not your fault. <laughs> people should have told you already <laughs> way back 20 years ago or something maybe 15 <laughs> <laughs> the golden mean it's a proportion and you describe it in the following way it's a proportion where the smaller proportion to the larger one is the same as the larger is to the whole you got that? <laughs> so you've got a distance and you can halve that distance, can't you? And then if you say this distance to this distance is the same as this distance to this distance, which it isn't. Yeah? But that's 0.5, isn't it? That's 0.5 between these two points but there's a, a place just a little bit bigger and it's 0 0.6 but it's not 0 0.6 it's 0 0.61 it's not 0 0.61 it's 0 
6108330 to infinity mm -hmm. and so you can never reach it you, you get the idea it's a proportion which is something like that that's about the golden mean I know it because I'm used to it <laughs> <laughs> it's the same as this distance here to here mm -hmm. this is the golden mean between these two but of course where is this and where is this you know you can't lock it in but qualitatively you have the golden mean there you have it here yeah you have it throughout your organism, the golden mean. So, please remember what it is. The smaller is to the larger as the larger is to the whole. It's as simple as that. And it looks like this. Can you see this pentagram here? This is golden mean. Here. The smaller is to the larger, as the larger is to the whole. <laughs> and that's only in that situation. It doesn't occur anywhere else. But here we can locate the point. Pardon? Here we can locate it. Yes. If you draw a regular star, <laughs> which you can do by trial and error in fact until you get it accurate if you take a circle and you plot five points on it and you do no more than guess equidistances between those five points you automatically get the golden mean of course you can construct it but constructions are only ever approximations yeah. For instance, you take this, you draw a circle, you put a distance in your compass, and you step it out round the circle. And 99% of the time, you don't arrive where you began. You've got a little gap. Because the thickness of the pencil line and the size of the point that you have brings about um, errors which is accurate as that because if you draw a circle it's a certain thickness of pencil and when you step it out round there you step out once on the outside of the line and what's on the inside of the line these sort of things so you have to do it several times but it's possible then to draw the pentagram so that this is always parallel to this. You follow? Mm -hmm. And this distance is golden mean to that distance. Mm -hmm. You follow? Mm -hmm. The pentagram is something absolutely magical. Mm -hmm. So everything in there is golden mean the distance between this one and the icosahedron there and the, and the dodecahedron in the middle that you can see I'd like to just open this out for you you don't need to be bowled over by the complexity of things it's not really as complex as you might imagine but it's important to know that these things exist and one or the other of you might like to take up a little bit of an investigation about these things and I'm bringing it to you because of this we had to build uh, um, a protection around the cascade and I used what's called an icosahedron I'll just get one to show you